What is up, guys? It's finally Friday with Rhino. We're going to talk a little beer. We're going to talk a little football. Anything else that pops up. New segment. Uh, tonight's segment brought to you by Steel Hands Coffee Lager. Mm. A local brewery in Casey, right across the river in downtown Columbia. Um, you got four acres out there. You got the brewery, tap room. You got an outdoor area where you can enjoy this beautiful Carolina weather right now. Um, generally, some live entertainment uh, pre COVID. And maybe now that McMaster has lifted the, the ban on restaurants, maybe post COVID. And uh, you can enjoy some good brews out there. The coffee lager, to me, I don't drink coffee, but it tastes kind of like a, a light coffee, maybe with a, with a, that's not dark, like a light roast, I guess. A light roasted coffee with a little bit of light beer in there. It's the, it's the best of both worlds if you got a noon game. You start drinking this sucker at nine o'clock, you get your coffee and your caffeine, and you get your uh, alcohol, and you're ready to roll. Uh, the write-up says, it's a rich aroma of your morning coffee, gently fading into easy drinking lager, golden, light, and crisp. This beer is a classic style with the familiarity of a good old cup of joe. A smooth, balanced taste that is sure to please beer drinkers and coffee aficionados alike. And it's infused with co uh, coffee from local roaster, Loveland Coffee. Four and a half percent alcohol. It comes draft. If you get it there, you can get 12 packs all over town. I think most of the beer distributors around here, like Greens and Total Wine, they have it. And then depending on who the rep is, places like Food Line and Publix will have it on the six pack as well. Still hands distributed by uh, Budweiser, Columbia, KW. Um, so they try to put it out as much as possible. Um, not bad, honestly. I can drink a couple of these. I don't think it's something I can drink all day because of the coffee taste, but 4.5% of alcohol, it ain't going to kill you. So check it out. All right, let's talk about football. Um, so South Carolina travels down to Gainesville this weekend. Um, lackluster performance against Tennessee. Some positive, a few negatives, but you end up in a loss. A game you really needed to win uh, if you're going to if you're going to break 500 this year because there's not a lot of wins on that schedule, um, especially you know this weekend. So you know. Quarterback looked good the second half. The only problem with the offense is there's not a lot of options. I mean, you don't have, you got Sha Smith on a slant, which is like old school Kenny McKinley. And then you got, you know, maybe Nick Muse hitting a squat, you know, 10 yards down the field. But the other guys really didn't get involved. And, and, and you know, I saw the carry on Jordan on the field, but he didn't touch the ball. There's a, a whispers of a Luke Doty. It's going to get the ball in his hands maybe this week. He's a, a freshman playmaker down in the Myrtle Beach area, uh, Mr. Football type guy. So I don't know if that means a quarterback or a, a wide receiver, but you just don't have enough guys. You just don't have enough playmakers like SEC guys, you know, SEC teams do that can make or break a game and uh, a game-changing performer running game. You know, you get five or six yards on first down, running to the right, and you come right back and run to the right again. Well, Tennessee's, a, you know, they saw that, bring a linebacker down, and you go from second and four to third and seven. And then, you know, if you undercut Shy Smith, who are you going to throw the ball to? It's just they got to be a little bit more dynamic on offense. Florida, on the other hand, boat raced Ole Miss. Uh, Ole Miss hung around there a little while early. But – you know, Kyle Trask has embraced Dan Mullen's system, and uh, you know he's he's become a really good quarterback. Got two good options at a tight end and a slot guy that's a lot like Percy Harvin 2.0. So it's dangerous, and I think Florida can score a lot of points. Um, you know, I can't say that South Carolina won't stay within 17. I mean, it's possible they had another week to see what they're working with. Mike Bobo was a smart guy. They may be able to score. I just don't think they can go score for score. So over and under is like 56, 57. I'd easily take the over in that. Uh, Florida will probably score 45 themselves. And, you know, so anything from the game costs and you get over. I just don't think the defense, you know, we've got some injuries in the secondary and linebacker. I don't think they're very good at it anyway. All their young pass rushers 
are inexperienced. They can't get to Trask. And if they blitz, that means they're leaving somebody one-on-one. -on -one. And that little creepy joker, uh, Dan Mullen, the, uh, Steve Spurrier, wannabe, but kind of on the nerd side, you know, he's going to do all he can to score 49, 50 points. So um, I think Florida wins. Going away, you know, at least double digits. I just don't know how high. It could get ugly if South Carolina falls into a, a slump of not – uh, non-productive drives and, and Florida scores. Flip side of that, Clemson, whoever knows. I mean, Clemson could score, you know, 49 in the first half like they did against Citadel and not score again. You just never know what to expect. They're going to beat Virginia handily. And the thing about Clemson is the offense pulls back the reins, but the defense never does. Venables is wide open all the time. So even when, you know, they're, they're, they're taking a seat and running draw plays and just running a little underneath plays, not trying to score points, the defense is still coming. And they, they're like three deep. So I think Clemson pretty much holds Virginia to 14, 17, something like that. It just depends on if they score uh, uh, more than 28 above them. You know, they easily score 45. So if they give up 17, it's a push. You know, if they give up 13, you win. So it's hard to say, but Clemson's easily, they walk through this one. I think Clemson plays Miami the following week and everybody's all of a sudden in love with Miami. If that spread, if the Miami spread is under 10 points, if Clemson's favored by less than 10 points, I'll put a thousand on Clemson. I mean, that's just facts. Miami's not that good. They, uh, they play some bad opponents. Louisville and Florida State both suck. You can't, you know, Clemson's here. You know, Louisville is down here and Florida State's probably on the floor. And they lost to Georgia Tech, for Christ's sake. So, yeah, he's looked good in those games, but Venables will put something on him he's never seen. And we'll look forward to that next week. But anyway, so now it's October 2nd. We got a new a group of beers that'll come out here in the next couple weeks. Oktoberfest and pumpkin type beers. Right here is a Yingling Oktoberfest. You know, a lot of you know Yingling. A lot of places have Yingling. Um, up in Pennsylvania, the uh, United States oldest brewery. It's a popular beer. I think it's more popular because people don't want to fall into that same drinking Bud Light uh, kind of thing. So, you know, Yingling's made its way down south and become a popular beer among Southern people. Um, come out right here with an Oktoberfest. I see they got, I think, a Hershey's uh, mixture. I'll, I'll probably grab a 12 pack of that because I like some chocolate. But uh, Yingling Oktoberfest. It's easy drinking. It's light. It doesn't taste much more different than maybe a regular Yingling. Just that I don't know, that Oktoberfest taste that, that all the beers have that, you know, Sam Adams has made really popular for everybody. Mm. It's all right, a little sour on the end. You know, it's not a bad beer. It's not one I'll buy again. Uh, not recommended like the two thumbs I give the steel hands. Yingling's more like a thumb. If somebody handed me one, I drink one. I drink two, I stop at two. Can't drink more than two of those. Not that great. But they all right. So, um, Yingling Oktoberfest, you know, give me one and then hand me something else. I'm old now, grew up in the South. I'm more of a light beer drinker. Can't drink the IPA. Don't really care for the off-brand tastes uh, of the Oktoberfest. Like I said, it's not bad. I drink a Yingling all day. Oktoberfest is not bad. I just can't drink more than two. So, anyway. Steel hands, lager, two thumbs up. I buy more of that. I drink three or four in the morning. After that, I'd switch to light beer. But it's a good taste. It's a good transition between coffee and light beer. It's not too bad. Yingling, it's not bad. It just doesn't suit my taste on the Oktoberfest. Um, a little bit a little bit too heavy for myself. And that little taste on the end just doesn't do it for me. But anyway. Gamecocks, Florida, high scoring affair. I'm going to say they score 80 points. 
And then Clemson, are, they're going to win somewhere between 24 and 34. I mean, they just are. But who knows who? Only Dabo knows how he's going to pull them reins back. And uh, so look forward to uh, another Family Friday segment. Pick you up some steel hands. If they open, stop by, hang out, drink you a couple. They got five or six different brands. Got some seasonals. Uh, got some IPA, lager, ale, pecan. Give them a try. Nice local, lo local brewery. Really popular. Coffee lager is good. So from now on, every Friday, I hope we'll try to give you at least one new beer. I'm gonna try to play golf at least twice this week and also give you uh, a new beer that you might wanna try. If you're thirsty, out on the course. Uh, got a handful to choose from. I got two in the refrigerator right now. Maybe Sunday morning I'll get out there before, uh, before the old guys wake up and knock out 18 and drink two of them beers. But anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week.